Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In this video, we discuss how Matchbox works within the Action 3D Compositor. Now, Matchbox was introduced as a batch node in a previous release of Flame Premium. For those of you who may not know about Matchbox, Matchbox is a set of interactive development tools that allow you to run graphic shaders programmed in the OpenGL shading language known as GLSL. This allows you to create your own custom effects within the Flame environment. Flame Premium currently supports image processing shaders. This allows you to apply various image processing effects to RGBA images, including textures to simulate a variety of effects. Quite a few come standard with the Flame Premium application, and certain members of the Flame community have created loads more for you to download and use with your system. I'll supply the link at the end of the video. Also, please check out the Flame Premium documentation if you're interested in writing your own shaders as well as converting generic GLSL code into a Matchbox shader. Now, when it comes to action, Matchbox has been implemented to give you a lot of flexibility within the action pipeline. So, looking back at the action diagram, media is loaded into the media list and any media-based tasks such as keying, colour correction and blurring are applied to the media. At this point, the media can be considered as a texture that will texture an image object or 3D geometry within the Action 3D scene. So, how does Matchbox fit into the Action Pipeline? Well, Matchbox shaders occur after the media list but before the Action 3D scene. This is known as the Texture Space. This allows for additional image processing to be applied to the textures using Matchbox shaders before they are actually textured onto 3D objects and surfaces. So, if we focus specifically on the Matchbox part of the Action Pipeline, there are a few guidelines you need to follow. Firstly, Matchbox uses the media entries in the media list as shader inputs. You use the front as the main input and the mat as the secondary input. Both inputs need to come from the same media entry. This is in contrast to using Matchbox in Batch, where you can use quite a few different sources as Matchbox inputs. It's also worth noting that if the Matchbox shader in action does not require a mat, the secondary channel could be used for something else, like Z depth input, for example. You have loads of Matchbox shaders you can choose from. You can apply one or multiple Matchbox shader nodes to a texture. So, you can build a pipeline of image processing effects and you can control the order of the shaders using the Action Priority Editor. Now, the Matchbox shader is compatible with all texture types in Action. This includes textures such as Diffuse, Normal, UV, Hardware Displacement, Parallax, IBL, Specular Emissive, Lens Flare textures and Substance textures. Please note that software displacement textures and position map textures are not supported using Matchbox. Finally, the Matchbox uses a per texture pipeline. In creative terms, Matchbox shaders can easily be shared across textures in Action simply by linking them in the Action schematic. So, you could have one Matchbox shader node applying an effect to multiple Action textures through a visual connection. You'll see examples of all of these points in the upcoming videos. If you want to follow along, you can download the media from the previous Action video covering the updates to the media list in Flame Premium 2016. Let's start off with the basic operations. So, you've added your image into the 3D scene and looking at the Action schematic, you have the typical axis and image object. Ensure the image object is selected. Now, you can apply the Matchbox shader in two different ways. The first way is to choose the All Nodes tab and locate the Matchbox node. When you double click on the node, it launches you into the browser. You can now select any Matchbox shader from the list. Upon returning to action, the Matchbox shader is applied to the texture and you get the specific effect. You will note that a diffuse map has been applied to the image object and a black Matchbox node is applied to the diffuse map. As a reminder, 
Matchbox shaders are applied to texture maps and not 3D geometry. Now if you already had a diffuse map attached, you would just apply the Matchbox shader node to the existing map by selecting it before applying the Matchbox node. Please undo the operation until you're back to just the axis and image object. The second way of applying a Matchbox node uses the same starting point. Select the image object. This time, in the Action Bin menu, change the tab to Matchbox. All the Matchbox shaders that are present in the directory User Discrete Presets 2016 Matchbox Shaders will appear in this specific Matchbox tab. They are not available in any other tabs including the All Nodes tab. Adding any other shaders to the shader directory will automatically create Matchbox nodes the next time you refresh the bin. Each node will be named after their specific Matchbox shader. And when you drag out the node, it will generate a diffuse map if not present and it will add the Matchbox node connected to the map. The other key difference is that in the Action Schematic, the node still retains the shader name and not the generic Matchbox name compared to the first technique. So those are the two different ways of adding Matchbox shaders into the Action Pipeline and please take note of the subtle differences. Looking closely at the Diffuse map, you can see that the media is coming from Media Entry 2 in the Media List. Under the hood, Media Entry 2 is loaded with a fill and mat. This applied to the Diffuse map that textures the 3D object. However, that Diffuse map is initially processed through the Matchbox shader before it textures the object. That is how you read the current representation of nodes in the Action Schematic. In the Result view, you see the combination of all the 3D objects with textures in the Action 3D scene as you would expect. Now Matchbox shaders are custom tools that you could write yourself and add into Action. And a great usability note is that if you double click on a Matchbox node, all its properties will appear in the object menu like any other Action node. So all the adjustable values and properties can be tweaked within Action like any other tool. And they can also be animated. Switch to the Animation Editor. If you scroll through the list, you will find the selected Matchbox shader. The root of the channels will be named after the node description and if you expand the channels, all the Matchbox animation curves will be present. So matching the media based tools in the media list, you can also use a Matchbox animation to drive object animation and vice versa. This opens up action to a whole new range of processing effects that you can see and work with in context of the Action 3D scene. If you want to download more Matchbox shaders written by various members of the Flame community, please go to logic-matchbook.org. In the next video, we'll go through the workflows of using multiple Matchbox shaders in the Action Pipeline. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.